My name is Dennis Reed Jr. I'm um, in sports. I play uh, football and basketball. And um, at the next level, I'm going to do my best to still try to play football. First career sack for DJ Reed. I've been through a lot, and I thank God for everything. And um, I don't take anything for granted. Big return and looking for more. DJ Reed Jr. with a man to beat. I'm just hungry. I just want to be the best I could be, the best person I could be. And um, I want to make my family proud. Started. Where it started. This is everything right here. Patriots Park. Yeah. We got up at 4 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Came up here, got a workout in. Go to the gym, do a gym workout. Go home. Might hit you up about 6. Hey, let's go to the park, get some DB drills or whatever like that. Yeah, I'll put you through it. It was fun, though. You know, we got to where you at. Nothing's more yeah. challenging than what you put me through, and I'm very grateful for that. The sweat, the tears. The, you know, the pain. You always tell me I was crazy, but it, <laughs> it was for a reason, though, man. Exactly. You know, everything that we did was for a reason. I knew from the gate that you was going to go to the league. Like, even when I told you, when I came out here and I pulled out a piece of grass, and I was like, this is you. All the rest is all the other athletes in the world. Like, what's the difference between you and everybody else? Nobody else that I ever met worked as hard as you work. And so it was never like, bro, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? If I, even if you stop, it's because I stopped you. That's something that made me proud. To see you grow from a little boy to a man, man, it's, uh, it's amazing, man. And I, and I love you, and I appreciate everything you do for, for these kids, man. Being a, a positive role model, man, it's a good thing. That's all I love, fam. All right, bro. <laughs> That's all I love. All right. <laughs> my dad, he, uh, he was a teacher. And my mom worked for, uh, for the county. We wasn't struggling or anything until I was like nine or 10. My dad got diagnosed with MS, and um, he's always been like an active person. He wrestled, and he was in shape and all that, and then just to all of a sudden be able to just walk with a cane, to just not being able to walk. Yeah, that situation really like affected him, and um, it affected my mom and him. They were married, affected the marriage and all that. That's kind of when we started struggling. Just my mom had to, you know, carry a major load as far as just working extra, um, working more than one job. I became the man of the house probably like 11. Like really trying to figure out what I'm gonna do to help my family. I thought sports was gonna be my way out. My brother worked hard, man. He worked harder than anybody I know. You feel me? Craig got him right for sure. The stuff they be doing is something. You feel me? I was not here doing it. I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm like, yo, V, was he working? He, he had a plan. Uh, he planned it out. That's one thing he did. He planned it out, and he spoke everything in existence. He said he's gonna leave here, he's going to junior college, from junior college. He told me he was going to enter the 2018 draft. This is what he said. See, a lot of people don't understand that we had this conversation. This is what he told me he was going to do. 2018 draft. He did everything he talked about what he was going to do. He believed in himself. And I told myself, I said, I'm going to go to JUCO just for one year. I'm not doing two years. I'm going to get my AA degree, and I'm going to go to a big D1 after that. And then after that D1, I'm going to leave my junior year if the opportunity is uh, given to me. Because my main thing was always has been to take care of my mom because she's provided everything for me. So that was just my main goal. I remember struggling, had nothing to do. So I had to hustle and had to take care of my family at an early age. And I got a lot of rage balling at an early stage. Hey. Yeah. It's Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> He's a it was David. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is crazy. Friday night, just to step foot on the field, it just brought back good memories, like homecoming, just balling out on this field, just, you know, where it all started. Look at that haircut. That flat top. Let's show them. See that flat top? Jeez. That's funny. Basketball in high school, I honestly enjoyed more. I like basketball more. Like, I really took basketball, like, personal, because I really wanted to make something happen out of it. I'm going to show you what this is. Come inside. Welcome to my crib. Yeah, this is, this is it. <laughs> Uh-oh, they already, he already shooting. They're warming up. Ooh-wee. Yes, sir. When I approached him about playing varsity, he didn't hesitate. He was ready, even though I wasn't sure 
he was ready. By two or two or three games into the season, he'd established himself as someone who was vital to our program. He has that little chip on his shoulder. As soon as he thinks you might have any doubt about it, whether he can do it, he wants to prove you wrong. When I played varsity as a sophomore, I really felt like I had something to prove because obviously basketball, everybody's tall, everybody's six foot and above on varsity. So I felt like I had to, you know, be better than everybody. We started the year, we knew we were going to be a good team. We didn't know how good. Like I said, we were very young. We played in the toughest league in town, even though we were a new, smaller school, and we went 10-0. and 0. I've coached for 35 years, and that season was the highlight of my career. Like a Coach Carter-type movie, like, like the year before, we was whatever, and then we got everybody back, had some new dudes come, and then we were just beating everybody. Like, nobody could beat us. He was definitely one of our top two or three players, but he didn't always start and I talked to him about it. We had other people on the team whose ego was attached to that starting position. DJ, very early on, said, Coach, I don't care. Whatever you need me to do, I'll come off the bench if you need me to come off the bench. There was nobody else on the team that would have been willing to do that. Next, DJ Reed with the steal, and he'll go coast to coast for the uncontested layup. I just, I don't know, like, it will be some games where I'll just go off. Like, I wouldn't miss any threes. There will be other games where I'm just throwing dimes. And then I also had good defense. I just felt like whatever my team needed, I would do. We're tremendously proud of him, watching him go through the various hurdles that he had to go through to get to this level. It just makes us extremely proud that he was part of our school for four years. Couldn't happen to a nicer kid. Independence High basically taught me and showed me through experiences like who I am. You know, high school for me wasn't perfect. You know, I had bumps in the road, but um, I feel like without this experience, I wouldn't, you know, be where I'm at today. We were gathering pictures up last night, and Tyson made a really good statement. He said, life is just a big memory book, and it's very true. We just go down memory lane, and it brings back a lot of good memories that we've had. And to see where they are today and what they're doing and is just a blessing. I am so proud. My family village love each other. We're there through the good and the bad. And I think that's what I'm most proud of, that we don't have a division. We basically work together to get things done. We wasn't sure where he was going to go. We knew he was going to probably go about the fifth round. He was sitting alone, I believe, when he got the call. And his face, everybody said, he's, he's got a call, he's got a call. And then we all kind of came in, and he just kind of, it was so emotional, but it was a good emotion. Did he say he wasn't going to cry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a good emotion, and everyone was there that, that had been part of his journey. The first game that DJ played was the best game because that was our first time experiencing the NFL experience. And it was so surreal. And you see where he came from, and now he's here. DJ character is just outstanding. Loving, kind person, very humble. He's very determined and he's very committed. And those are characteristics that, that he carries with him ever since he was a kid. My friend owns a furniture store here, so I went to him and I said, I need a curio case big enough to put all DJ stuff in. And all of this right here is K-State. And this is just some. There is a whole lot more, but I don't have a lot of space. As you can see, my walls are full. <laughs> the orange cleats, those mean a lot to me. My MS walk cleats, my dad has MS. We played Seattle the second game in those, and we won. So we're talking to my dad after the game, just about everything in the cleats. That meant a lot to me. That Seattle game was probably the best win, um, other than the Broncos game, I feel like, that we had all season. So. Yeah, this is, this is the journey, and we're looking forward to the journey to continue. G Money. Hey, Jack, what's up, baby? Bro? Boy, you looking good, man. How you feeling? <laughs> I feel good. You been cutting my hair since I was in diapers. Boy, as a kid, when DJ got drafted, I kind of knew that he was already going to get drafted because he got the heart already as an NFL player. Like, I cut hair for athletes already. At first, I started off with Joey Porter. I, then I, I got on with um, Fitzgerald. I ended up cutting up Jamal Charles, Mike Tomlin, Patrick Peterson. But everybody don't got the humbling spirit and just the same dog like DJ in the league. One thing about where we from, a lot of people don't get to make it that far. It's something like a brotherly love. It's just beautiful seeing somebody from a kid and just going through the stuff that they have been through as a kid and actually make it. Thank you, Coach. Wow. Oh, God. Appreciate you, man. I kept you dark on top. I appreciate that. Appreciate you, fam. 
We got Chef Angelina in the kitchen, which is God, uh, DJ's godmother. We love having family over. You see, we change our house up to whatever it needs to be. <laughs> That's what we do. We have a lot of love here. We take a village to raise kids, and uh, like everybody here, like impacted my life positively. Um, just everybody, like Coach D, like I ain't seen him in years, and he just felt like, you know what I'm saying, like I'm about to go to a tournament right now with him. And so we've had some success stories, we've had some non-success stories, but when we got these lights, these shining lights that are out there, that you guys are gonna come back to Bakersfield and be examples, because you all you all know where you come from. I like hanging with people that like that didn't change, that like before I made it, they were still cool with me, they were still being you know genuine, showing real love. Like those are people that I keep around. Uh, me and my brother both have cystic fibrosis. It's a genetic lung disease. And this past year he did multiple sclerosis for his dad. And this next year he's gonna do cystic fibrosis and hopefully we'll cause some awareness to find a cure. Oh my God, I love you dude. Love you too bro. Just having people like that around you really help you um, for the better. So I'm grateful to have everybody here on Window, on Robin, on Ruby. Everybody here impacted my life and like I'm blessed and thankful to have in my life. In due time! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>